What up, Panther Nation? Good evening. It is your boy, Big Tasty, a.k.a. that freaking Puerto Rican, and my co-host, the professor, Touchdown Tony Dunn. We are excited about tonight's Cat Chronicles episode. We have a special guest that will be on shortly. We've been hyping him up ever since we've known he was coming on the show, and I think us, along with the rest of Panther Nation, we are all excited about getting him on. Tony, what's happening? Boy, I am pumped, man. I am pumped. We've been, we've had a crazy week in North Carolina when it comes to sports. The Bobcats are on TV going to the wire right now. Um, you know, some kind of funky free agency stuff going down is that really that what I think it tells us is that the buzz, the excitement of Panther football is just carried over so much. And that excitement has really just been with me all week looking forward to tonight and talking to Michael Campanero, uh, a backyard baller for sure, uh, Wake Forest standout superstar, in fact, to a point. And, um, you know, I mean, I'm just happy to, to get a guy on the show tonight that not only is such a good dude, you know, I mean, yes, he is. a good guy, uh, and really just a good, a great player on top of that. But, you know, we got that North Carolina flavor uh, or the Carolina flavor that we like to support. So, you know, it's a big night for us as a show. Um, and I think that most importantly is that uh, Campanero is a legit prospect for the Panthers. You know, I see him as a real possible addition uh, to the show. So I think, um, you know, we're going to we're going to get started with him him in just a second. I'm excited. Um, you know, what do you think about stuff that's been going on in Panther football right right now? I think it's pretty interesting. I think we're seeing um, the the development of a plan, a long term plan. You know, I say long term and it's not really we're not talking decades down the road. We're talking a couple of years. And there's a lot that people have been questioning. Fans have been unsure of. But uh, Gettleman is a steady hand. And he's got a lot of uh, foresight. And I think he's, he's using all his years of experience with different organizations. Um, to, to He's building a, full, uh, a blueprint. He's following a blueprint he has designed to, to make this franchise a winner consistently. Well, look, I think we got him on the line here. I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're here with former Wake Forest wide receiver Michael Campanero, who set the school record for receptions and tallied up a whopping 2,506 receiving yards, the third most in school history. Thanks for coming on the show. How are you, Michael? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Man, um, look, we've been following you. We... Um, we, we were really impressed with your combine performance. Uh, we saw a 4.46.40 as the official time. Uh, a time I saw even lower at 4.44. 20 reps on the bench, strong as an ox, 39-inch vertical leap, 10-foot-2 on the broad jump. And just to put that in a little perspective uh, for our Carolina fans, Sammy Watkins had a 34-inch vertical jump and 16 reps on the bench and only outshined you by a hair. Uh, on the 40. How did you feel about your combine performance? It had to be pretty good. Yeah, I was, uh, I was really pleased uh, with how the workout went. Uh, I felt great with the numbers I hit. I was, I was training hard um, after the season was over, and uh, I had that collarbone injury, so it was just, I just knew it was going to be a lot of hard work, uh, just getting back to, you know, where I felt like, uh, like I was, I was going to, you know, before hitting those numbers. So I was pleased with uh, the performance, and I know I definitely turned some heads at the combine. Man, you turned our heads. Very, man, you, you started, you are the very reason that we started the whole Backyard Baller series on our website. So uh, we were we were specifically uh, impressed. Was there a specific drill that you felt that you did particularly well in or that you were more pleased than uh, maybe you expected going in? Um, I feel like, uh, you know, the drills we did, we, we did the gauntlet, just catching the football, I thought, uh, I thought that was a good drill, just to, just to show teams, uh, you know, my hands and, and catching the ball with my strong hands, I thought that was a, a big drill, just because, 
so many, um, you know, so many scouts that they look at all these numbers. But I think what what gets lost is the actual football part. So I thought that was good just to get out there. And, um, you know, I caught every pass. So I was happy with that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, uh, was there anything that you learned going into the draft process about the combine that you didn't know uh, or expect when you when you went into it? Um, I, would, I think I learned a lot through the process. Not the, the big thing is just you know never get too high on something you do, never get too low. You know, it's just a long process, and uh, you know you got to stay focused for for a long time. You know, until, until you hear your name called. So I think that's the biggest thing. Just uh, same even and just uh, keep working hard. Man, that's great. Uh, did you? How was the the interview process? Was it pretty grueling? Did you get any tough questions from GMs or you know was there anything that stood out about the interview process? You know, we just get to see the drills. We get to follow you know the stat line, the tickers, and things like that. So we don't really get to see the personal aspect of it. Was there anything that you know maybe would surprise us or about the whole incident? Uh, there wasn't too many things. I remember um, when I talked with the Cleveland Browns, they had me do um, an, an interview on like an iPad, and they asked me um, in 60 seconds how many different ways you can use a brick. How many times you use that to start? Um, <laughs> didn't have answers on how you can use a brick, so that was a that was a pretty. Um, well, what'd you say? Um, I said things like. Lift weights with it. You can play catch with it. Um, you can use it like step on it, like be taller. I said, <laughs> over the head with it, stuff like that. That's all. That's great. Um, okay. Well, that that leads me to one question that I thought of. Um, when it comes, have you ever thought about growing dreads so you could be that six foot mark like Sammy? If I ever thought about growing dreads. Yeah, so you could just, you know, I mean, do you think that they measure that? How do they account for his hair when they measure his height? I don't know. It's probably like stick the ruler, you know, in between his hair or something. They got to, <laughs> I know they got to take away some hair, but you can definitely see a lot of guys have their hair grown out trying to, trying to get a few inches. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's great. Um. Have you been? Have you worked out for any pro team since the combine? Yeah, I'm actually. Uh, I'm actually back home right now in Maryland. I actually had a workout this morning with the Baltimore Ravens. Um, so that went really well. I've just been. Uh, I've been uh, just training down in my school and teams have come by and, and worked me out a little bit. But this is the first time I've, I've gone to a, a place and uh, worked out for them. So this has been good, but. Um, after this, I think I'm going to head back down to Miami because I don't think I'm expecting any more um, team visits uh, or workout. Um, so I'm just going to head back to Miami and, and, and keep training and gearing up for mini camp. Man, that's awesome. Uh, you know, former Carolina Panther Steve Smith is with the Ravens now. So um, yeah. we'll be pulling for them as much as we can this year. Uh, my, my buddy Joey's got a, qu a couple of questions for you. He's going to jump in right now. Hey, Michael. Hey, it's great to have you on the show, man. I'm really excited about you being here. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is, what current or former NFL receiver do you think your style of play most closely resembles? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's exactly uh, one player I could really uh, say um, I play like, but I know there's a guy who I really love watching is um, Antonio Brown for the Steelers. Um uh, I just really enjoy studying his game, and he plays. Uh, he plays a good amount of outside. He plays a lot of inside as well. So he does a lot of special teams, and I just think he's great. He's great and crafty with his routes, and um, you know he's always making plays for his team and just finding ways to get open. So I really enjoy uh, watching his game and just studying from him. Yeah, he's a very versatile receiver. I think um, I think that's a very good point you make. He is versatile. He can play inside or outside. Um, what what was your most memorable on field college moment? Um, it would probably be uh, I probably I probably have two. Uh, one of them is probably um, when I took the punt back against Clemson my sophomore year at Death Valley. That was a uh, that was a good play. And then this past year when I broke the single as a career uh, receiving catches record for my school. 
Uh, that was a, I broke Desmond Clark's record. That was a pretty big, uh, big moment for, for myself and my team and my family. Yeah, especially with, you know, doing it with three games short. Um, what about this? Is my, I've got two things to follow up on that. Is Was it fun blowing up Maryland? Last uh, last season, didn't you have like 150 yards against them and 10 catches? Yeah, yeah, that was that was. Uh, I was definitely looking forward to that game just because um, the year before that I had my broken hand and I wasn't able to play against those guys uh, up in Maryland. So um, I was definitely looking forward to getting after them, and it was great we got the win and uh, also broke the record against those guys. So that was that was a fun day. Yeah, you got to stick it to North Carolina State, too, and we always love that. Where I'm a Pirate fan, so we're in Greenville, North Carolina, so we always like it anytime anybody does that. Um, and the other the other thing is is that I, I think you're like – you remind me a lot of Darren Sproles, and I know that he's a running back, uh, but he never plays like a running back, really. He always plays like a wide receiver. He's real strong and fast. Do um, you think you could – be that type of playmaker in the NFL? Definitely. I feel like uh, talking to a lot of NFL teams and and they kind of ask me, uh, you know, where, where I see myself in the, in the draft class, and I, I feel like I'm definitely one of the most uh, versatile players uh, and receivers in the class just as far as I think you can play me inside and outside. I think I can help out a team, special teams. And, and also, uh, I feel like if if you need me to go back there and take a few carries, I feel like I, I, I can also do that. So I definitely think that uh, that's a big thing I bring to a team is just my versatility. Yeah, even throw a touchdown occasionally, right? That's right. Um, I, I wanted to ask you one more question, Michael. Um, it, this is more of an off-the-field question, but doesn't have to be. Who has been the most influential person in your life, whether that's on or off the field? Um, I would definitely uh, have to say my parents. Um, they've they've been great. Um, uh, you know, since I've been young, um, they just always supported me and been there for me. Um, and still confidence in me as I've gotten older. And um, just two great people and and two people I look up to and just respect the time and. Um, just people I really enjoy being around, and, and they've really helped me out up until this point in my life. Um, where we we followed you pretty closely around here in North Carolina, and you've got a reputation here and throughout the ACC for being just fearless on the field. Um, do you worry about that attitude, essentially, that grittiness, that tenacity? Um, that it may affect your longevity at all at the next level? Uh, I, I don't. That's definitely a question I've, I've been asked just because I was, uh, you know, injured these past two years. But, um, you know, I think uh, watching my tape, I think a, a lot of teams see I, I do a great job of, of, of uh, you know, of knowing when to get, get the first down when there's more yards to get. And then also understanding when it's time to get down and, didn't live to play another another down, but uh, you know I did a lot with our offense, and you know, when you're touching the ball that many times, I mean some some injuries are going to happen, but it's just a part of the game. Um, you know, broken collarbone, broken hand, broken bones are just tough, so you just gotta um, you know keep your head down, keep working hard, and um, I, I don't worry about that at the next level. Yeah, I think that's a, I think that's the right way to go because you know that that's what makes you great. Um, so. We don't think you should tame that down at all. Uh, do, you, do you think that that's even something that can be coached out of a player, or is that just kind of just built in your DNA? It's, it's kind of just, uh, you know, built in this way. I've, I've always played the game since Pee Wee. Uh, it's always been that kind of player. That's the, that's the way uh, you know, my father brought me up and, and coached me, so I don't think you can coach that out of a guy. Well, yeah, well, we certainly don't want you to, to tone it down at all, so keep it up. And uh, I want to ask you this. i got a couple of things on the way out. Is First, uh, can you see yourself catching passes from Cam Newton next year? Yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. I'm, uh, I'm really excited to see where I end up. I know my agents told me a lot of, 
what I'm projected, and it, it seems like the mid rounds, third and fourth range. So um, I think it's just going to be a crapshoot. I've, I've gotten tons of great feedback from tons of teams, so I'm just really excited to see where I end up with. Carolina is definitely a team uh, that I can see myself playing for. I, I think I can definitely see myself catching passes from uh, Cam. Well, you actually are currently leading the voting on our website uh, for fourth round wide receiver pick. So the Carolina fans are rooting hard for you. Um, I got two questions from fans right now. And one is, what was the toughest defense you played against in the ACC um, this past year? Or was it even not in, in the ACC? This past year, um, let me think. I would probably say um, Miami's defense this year was pretty good. Um, just just how they were playing me personally, and they had a lot of great athletes, and they were just they were doing a lot of different stuff um, to us. But but they had a good defense this year. I'd probably say over the course of uh, times as I've been at Wake, I think last year's. Florida State defense was really good. They were, uh, I think we got shut out and put up three points against them. Um, I I think last year, the year before, but they were really good. They had, from uh, the front seven to the secondary, they just had studs everywhere. It's tough to get anything going. And we got one other question, and that is, is they want one of our viewers, um, Aaron Ford, wants to know what you'll bring what do you think you'll bring directly to an NFL offense next year if you when you get on the field? I think, um, you know, whichever team drafts me, I feel like they're going to get a reliable and dependable guy, and they're going to get a, a guy who's going to come in and compete right away, uh, you know, for a starting job. And, uh, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, I pick up on playbook stats. I think I'm the type of guy who can come in and play right away uh, and, just, and just be that guy that can, you know, catch maybe 70, 80 balls and, uh, you know, early out there and just, you know, help a, help an offense out, moving the chains and, and making some uh, big plays for for a team. So if that's on offense or special teams, I think I can uh, come in and help a team out, you know, immediately. Man, I tell you, I want to see you catch 80 balls for the Carolina Panthers next year. Um, Amen to that. <laughs> Uh, we have actually have a gift for you, Michael, that we're going to send you. I made you oh, a yeah. t- I made you a T-shirt that says Camp Fearless, and <laughs> um, and it's got the Cat Chronicles logo on it. And what I wanted to do, I, I got two requests for you, and I'm going to let you not answer one of them because I know you can't. And the first one is, okay. don't go play for the Saints. Uh, that's my first request, and my second request is is when you make it, because I know you're going to make it big time, Michael. Um, I think so much of your success just from following you and studying you uh, comes from that stable family structure, the good character, the hard work ethic, and I know so many kids out there just don't have that, and I could see you just making a hit one day, putting on a football camp, for kids that maybe don't have that family structure. And if you ever decide to do that, name it Camp Fearless for me. <laughs> I'll, I'll be sure to keep that in mind. Now, all right. Uh, well, thank you so much for taking some time out of your night uh, to join us. Panther Nation has been really excited about this. Um, and best of luck to you in the draft. Thank you so much, Michael. All right. Thank you. That, that is Michael Campanero. Uh, Joe, awesome dude, isn't he? Oh, man, he is everything I, I thought he would be. He seems really down to earth, and, and I think it really does boil down to that family environment that he was brought up, and you can tell he cares deeply for his siblings, his parents. They may, they're very important in his life, and they've um, been important in his life, and, and that's really kept him grounded, I believe. Well... I tell you one thing, because I got three little kids, Joe, um, and I see, and I look, I don't know the, I don't know the Campanero family myself intimately, but you know, just a few interactions I've had with, uh, just talking with Michael there and and his brothers, 
you know, it's just impressive. And all I can say is this, is that I hope that my children, when they grow up, have that work ethic, that kind of character, that fortitude. Because here's the thing, at the NFL level, everybody is talented. You know, sure. everybody runs the 4-4, four, four, I mean, not everybody runs the 4-4-40, four, four, as that dude's a beast on the on the measurables. But, <laughs> right. Uh, but everybody's a great athlete, so there's got to be something that sets you apart, that makes you great, uh, and it doesn't come. I don't. I don't believe it's from the physical side of the game. I think it's purely, you know, that character, that ability to, uh, you know, stick through tough times, through adversity, to study, to keep your nose clean, and you don't do that alone. No, you're right. You gotta have the the support system in place. It takes a uh, it takes a you know. There's a saying that says, it takes a village to raise a child, and and the village is is in the home. You've got all the the different influences in a child's life: their father, mother, siblings, and you can see all the positive influences and just the way he he interacts with people, the way he talks, uh, his behavior. You know. Um, and I guess that just shows the importance of, of having that support system just to keep you grounded. Um, you, you know, people who don't have that support system can sometimes let the fame and, and the good fortune go to their head and can, you know, be misled. Um, so that, that's where I think he's, I don't want to say guaranteed success, but even if he doesn't make it to the Hall of Fame in the NFL or, or have a long career in the NFL, He's going to succeed in life, whatever he chooses to do. Well, I know that I, I got a I got a great feeling about this guy when he goes to the NFL. I think he's going to be one of those dudes that explodes. And look, when you look at a guy like Darren Sproles, look, Darren Sproles is five six. Right. You know, uh, when you look at at camp, that dude is built like a brick house. Right. And whatever them boys and them brothers are doing in Clarksville. Uh, whatever weight program they got going on, it's like a Spartan program. <laughs> He's a gladiator. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, it is intense, and that, and I mean, just look at it. A guy he weighs under 200 pounds, and he repped with the strongest dudes, uh, and that's with a collarbone, a broken collarbone, and this right guy. coming off an injury. That's right. Yeah. Uh, just a phenomenal talent. I hope that the Panthers look. I just know this, is that he ain't going to make it past the fourth round. That mug, he's going to get snatched up, and whoever gets him, I've been saying this for a while, is a gem, a gem in this draft. And uh, you can just, as old my buddy old Perry Castro says, listen to me now, believe me later. Me later. That's right. Uh, no, um, I, I think you're right. I think not only that on the field aspect, but you know he's going to be a great off the field asset as well to any organization, whatever city he goes to. Yeah, um, just you can tell. And, and, you know, look, Wake Forest, no slouch of a school when it comes to academics. Absolutely. Uh, uh, so, um, you know, I'm excited about this, and I'm really hoping, because I'm going to say this, is that if we land him in Carolina, how cool will we look? <laughs> uh, <laughs> For sure. You know, because we've been pump, you know, we've been all over this for weeks now, um, so I'm happy about that. But let's let's go ahead and get on to some other Panther business while we're here, um, and I'll just go ahead and put this plea into Dave Gettleman, Dave, buddy, the Cano Mr. Cannoli. If you could please listen to me now, draft Michael Campanero. Don't let him slip past the fourth. Um, but Joey, what the heck is going on? In Charlotte is is Dave Gettleman? Is he just is he a grouchy old man that's saying get off my lawn? What is his? Is he just like a some guy from The Godfather that's like don't talk outside the family? Or <laughs> what is happening? Did you see D'Angelo Williams, the guy who's always smiling and happy on national TV this week, uh, a little upset? He did. He definitely cast some aspersions to the to the off season that the Panthers have had so far, um, and, and you know he's not the only one. You know, Panther Nation as a whole has been uh, somewhat 
disappointed, I think, in this offseason. I really believe Gettleman has a plan. I mean, we saw what he did last year, and, and there are people out there who are saying he's not give us, given us any reason to doubt his ability. All yeah, but do we have a big enough sample size to just say, I mean, I think either way, I don't think we could be negative or positive, but are you that faithful? Well, I, I, I think I'm that hopeful. Oh, I like that. Well done. Yeah, I'm that, I'm that hopeful with it. I believe, you know, he's got years and years of experience in the front office. He, he you know, this isn't his first rodeo, so I believe he can see the, the big picture versus looking at the immediate picture. And that's where with the approach he's taken, I, I'm, I'm hoping anyway. Well, you know, I'm, I'm with you is that, you know, I, I don't want to give him a complete free pass because the whole Steve Smith thing, just a debacle. And I disagree with it. You know, I, I think that Steve Smith would have been helpful to get one more year out of him. Uh, but with that said, he's doing what he does, Dave Gettleman. He has added, I think, some cheap pieces that are going to be, you know, they're not going to be exceptional, but the the guy from Arizona, what's his name, Canton? Kason? Kason, yeah. yeah. I think he's going to fit right in, and I don't think we're going to see a downgrade in the secondary. Uh, Deku, is that how you pronounce it? The safety from Atlanta or whatever. Oh, they, DeKoud? Oh, they yeah. Count, yeah, they some, do, yeah. Something like that is yeah. that um, I don't think that, you know, he's a former, he's at one point was a Pro, ba pro Bowl caliber safety. Yes, I think he was. He's been to two Pro Bowls. So I think that, look, he, Gettleman can find those guys. I think Kotri was a great pickup. Um, but. I don't think that we can just go ahead and say entirely that in Dave Gettleman we trust. I think it's important to remember um, that, look, Ron Rivera was on the hot seat very, not too long ago. Um, You're right, we, just last year. Yeah, is that, you know, if they wouldn't have gone eight straight, um, you know, we might be singing a different tune. But with that said, I think... Uh, you know, Roman Harper. Uh, what do you think about this Alex Hall guy from the CFL? Is that going to be something that works? Did we? What does that say about Alexander and uh, Addison, right? Right, right. I, I don't think it's a, a, a negative on them in any way. What I think he's doing is just providing depth for us, just giving us, you know, into that fourth quarter when, when the offensive linemen are tired. And, you know, they've been blocking, run blocking, pass blocking. I think we're going to have fresher legs that's going to give us that edge. And we saw last year how good our front seven is and how it can make up for a sometimes maybe deficient secondary. Yeah. And, Do you and think that's we're it. An upgrade? I think we might actually have upgraded the secondary. Um, you know, there's, there's some pieces there that I like for sure. Um, I, I personally would have liked to have kept Mike Mitchell. I don't know that it would have been realistic um, when it comes to dollars, but just personnel-wise, I really liked what he brought to the defense. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it can be argued that, yes, that the secondary is better. At that point, you know, there can be an argument for that, surely. Well, with, with you saying that you like Mike Mitchell and you liked his personality, can you realistically like Roman Harper? Um, <laughs> after the Steve Smith incident, I don't know that I'll ever really like him, but um, he's a Panther now, so I will pull for him to play well and to do well. Have you um, seen how excited and giddy he's been? Do you yeah. think that that's kind of forced to try to get himself into good graces with the Panther fans? I would say that would be a shrewd move on his part maybe too shrewd a move on his part to, to do it intentionally. I think he's genuinely happy to be on a contender. I've gone from one contender to another. Okay. I see him following a lot of people on Twitter. So right. I've noticed that as well. Um, I don't like Roman Harper right now because uh, all he's done is 
fight my one of my favorite players of all time. So here's two things, Roman Harper, you can do to maybe get me to like you. Number one, play well this year and lay some dudes out and not get penalties. Number two, maybe you should try following at cat underscore chronicles on Twitter. Might be a good start. Holler uh, at your boy, Roman Harper. <laughs> no. Um, so, I, you know, I like I like Melvin, uh, Melvin White. Big body. Um, the Kason guy, I think, is really a good player. It was just on an outsta- a team that had an outstanding secondary. Um, I think we're good. I think defensively, here's the key, and nobody's talking about this. Thomas Davis is Thomas Davis. Is he going to stay healthy? And he's no spring chicken. No, he's not. So. Um, you know, that, we can't lose him. Uh, he played such an important role uh, just bringing that veteran presence uh, to the team that we really need Thomas Davis. We need the old Bulldog to give us one more good, solid Pro Bowl season. Um, and then I think if that happens, Joe, that we could see ourselves with a defense that was better than last year's. Wow, that's really saying a lot because we were number two last year, so there's only one other place to go to get better. We would have what to if, be number one. But if we draft a – what if? Just what if we drafted Kyle Fuller, Bradley Roby, or somewhat top caliber corner in the draft in the first round? What if we just went all in uh, in the draft on defense, essentially, in the first round? and got a shutdown guy, or as close as it could be. I mean, is there a defense, really? That, I mean, that, that might do it. Right. I mean, you can argue that our front seven is better than Seattle's. You oh, can argue that. Easy. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the secondary, and that, yeah. is it Thomas, that guy that plays safety? Yeah, Earl Thomas, yeah. That guy's sick, you know, so... Um, we put some thumpers back there in the secondary, and all of a sudden we got the number one ranked defense. That's what I'm talking about. Right, right. That's the only way to get better is to be number one. So, I mean, it's it's possible. If um, That's really the area we were lacking in was our secondary. And not that it was bad. It just wasn't as good as our front seven. No, they played well because they had the best front seven in front of them. But to be honest, I mean, let's go ahead and say it, is that no point – in that whole season, did you ever feel feel not nervous about the secondary for a moment? Right. If they if the defensive front didn't get pressure on the quarterback, you were you were worried. You were concerned about what was going on back there. Yes. They were the vulnerability of that defense. Um, so I don't know what we're going to do. I certainly do not think that we're going to draft. A, I really don't think we're going to draft a corner in the top. But I would be a little excited if we did get that guy to just say, all right, Cam Newton, get us 14 points by yourself. Just throw it to yourself and run around and do whatever it takes because no team will score more than 13 points on you all year. But um, let's move and shift gears to the offense a little bit. We want to talk free agency, but, Joey, there's been a little buzz about an old-timer that joined the coaching squad. First, we got to give, I got to give a lot of props to the guy, uh, whoever tweeted it for the Carolina Huddle, uh, dot com, and then Bill Voth got a hold of it and did a whole piece on how uh, fans are reporting news and uh, all this jazz. Tell us a little bit. Ramsdale, right, used to be with the greatest show on turf. turf. Yeah, he sure was. How how fitting is that? His name's Ramsdale, and he he was with the Rams. Yeah. Um, he's been around a while. I was uh, reading some of his bio, and he has been around a while. He's been around football a long time. Um, he has had tremendous success wherever he's gone, at least here in the in the recent past. He uh, made Kurt Warner the two-time NFL MVP, a Super Bowl MVP. Um, and I think even the year that Kurt Warner got hurt there with 
with the Rams, uh, Trent Green came in and he put up fantastic numbers, like 3,600 yards passing, 30 something touchdowns. So um, he made uh, what's his name again? The second guy you Trent, said, Trent Green. Trent Green, the old guy, right? Is Trent Green, who always played, uh, you know, who had a fond, uh, a soft spot for him, who always shed a tear, was Dick Vermeil. Loves some. Uh, Trent, Trent Green, he sure and did. Dick Vermeil, I'm sure, cried about Trent, Trent Green a couple <laughs> of times. But here's what you're saying: is you're saying this guy Ramsdale took a grocer, Kurt Warner, who was bagging groceries, and made him a Hall of Fame quarterback. What could he do uh, to help Shula get this offense firing on all cylinders? Will he be a help, or is he too old? Um. I don't think he's too old. I think he's there to sort of mentor, maybe tutor the the passing aspect of this offense to uh, Shula. Just maybe give him a little guidance. Um, we 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 need something. We needed something to be done. And frankly, to this point in our off season, I would say, save for the Greg Hardy re-signing or the franchising, this addition of Ramsdale has been the best move we've done as an organization. Ouch. I really, and I'm not. I, that's not to 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 criticize or be critical of the Panthers or any of the p- players that they've added. I think it's just that big of a move, as far as you know the the direction this team will be going in. It's well, you know, yeah. I mean, I think it's an interesting theory that you have that it's that important because. This team is, you know, Rivera's got experience, but it's all on the defensive side of the ball. Um, McDermott has finally hit his kind of peak, I guess, as a coordinator, as a defensive coordinator. At least he had some great pieces, and he made it happen last year. We'll need to see another year uh, to just go ahead and give him a head coaching job, I think. Um, Shula, though, was in a – what did he coach for? It was uh, Arkansas or something like that, or – uh, he was the head coach at a Alabama. Company. Was it Alabama? Yeah, it was Alabama. Okay. Um, f- didn't have a good career there. Uh, he is taking. He is not well liked by the fan base right now, Shula. I will say, strangely, he has flown under the radar through all of this hate uh, and division in Panther Nation. Um, and Dave Gettleman has gotten the brunt of it from the radio shows, from the call-in, from the emails, from the tweets. Is Dave Gettleman has been the, the number one enemy, uh, or I won't say enemy, but he's definitely, they, you know, Frank Garcia has been made it known that he's not happy with what's going on uh, with the front office. But Shula has really... I don't think he's gotten a criticism potentially he deserves. I don't think we necessarily have to make a change right away, but it could have, you know, maybe bringing in somebody a little bit uh, to open it up wouldn't have hurt. But if you don't have the pieces, can you? Right, and I, I think that's that goes back to Dave Gettleman's, and you know, blueprint. He he he's trying to get the most bang for his buck right now because we do have limited dollars. I mean that's just a reality we have to face. Right, right. Dollars are are very few and far between right now. So he's getting what he can, the most bang for his buck, and and I think he's done an admiral job to this point. Uh, you, you know, we still have the draft to play out, so that's going to go a long way in determining whether this off season has been a failure or success prior to the start of the regular season. That's when you really, you know, that's when the the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. But uh, as of right now, a lot of people would say this this off season has been a failure, um, just based on being fans, and you know fans are just that fanatical, and they see the moves that the Bucks have made, the Saints have made, um, even the Falcons banging a little bit, making a little bit of noise, trying to get better. So they look at that, and you know we we sign Jericho Cotri, we sign um, is it Jason Avant? Yeah, here you know? check it out, Joe. Um, Jason Avant, he is the man. Jason Avant has got great hands. Jason Avant says. Jason-
tasted a bun. <laughs> Oh my god, that's yeah. awful. Oh no, it's great, dude. It's great. It's been on the radio. What? A, whoever made that YouTube video crushed it. That doesn't get you excited? Jason Avant, he's got great hands. He's a great receiver, Joe. Is that not enough for you? No, that's not. One song is not going to do it for me. Um, I don't know where his real value lies on the field. But I know he's he's been around. He's had he's experienced success. I'm sure he's a, a good professional, and perhaps that's the main reason why he was brought in to um, show the young guys, the guys that were bringing up how to be NFL caliber receivers, professionally, watching tape, um, practicing the right way, you know that that sort of thing. Um, I could see him being valuable in that regard. Well, I mean, he's got great hands, like the like the song said. Um, and what we had last year was a lot of speed with not great hands. Well, we have one guy that had a lot of speed that had alligator arms and Ted Ginn, <laughs> uh little T Rex arms going around. Um, LaFell, Butterfingers. So what you bring in is you bring in Jer Jericho Cotri who caught 10 touchdown passes last year. Jason Avant, um, he only had 38 receptions. But to be honest, uh, so did Ted Ginn, really. <laughs> um, it was, And Jason Avant was probably like the fourth option in a offense that was very fast-paced. So what I think what we did, Joe, on I'm actually kind of happy with these two pickups for this reason. Both are big body boys. Yeah. Both are, are tall, big receivers that, like the video said, got great hands. And um, look, somebody tried to, I think it was Nate Conley, uh, where I was going back and forth with him on Twitter from the fa from that, uh, what's it called, Bustin' Loose? And uh, he said that I conveniently let, because uh, I, I put up, I tweeted uh, the stats for Steve Smith and versus the stats versus Jericho Cotri and he and he said you conveniently left off that uh, Cotri had twice as many touchdowns as Steve Smith but he only I mean that if that's all he caught essentially he did have 10 touchdowns but maybe what we're trying to do Joe bring some big boys in some big targets so when we get in the red zone we can get those touchdowns rather than those three points and what I'm thinking that might suggest that we look for speed in the draft, mm -hmm. i.e. Cooks in the first round, which CarolinaCatChronicles.com fans have have said that they love the most, um, as well as uh, Michael Campanero, fourth round. You put the big boys, you stretch the field deep with Cooks, and then you let Camp tear them up underneath in the zones, we might be cooking. We'll definitely have something going, that's for sure. Uh, you know, so uh, if with that personnel, Joe, with Jericho Cotri, with Jason Avant, with no speed, I mean, come on, those guys aren't going to be burning it down the no, side. No, no, no. Um, then you've got McNutt, who's another big dude. Uh, you could say, is it Tavares King? Yeah. Um, he's a fast guy. He's pretty fast, but he's not. I guess you got the take on Underwood, some speed, but I, he reminds me a lot of Ted Ginn. Is that I feel like he's going to have trouble getting off the line, uh, muscled around a little bit. I just don't think. Does that suggest that we're going to go big bodied receiver in the draft? You know, would that complement well to get like a Benjamin, or would it be more complimentary to get a guy like? Uh, Cooks or uh, Beckham? Well, I think if we do get uh, a small guy, a small guy, you know, relatively speaking, in terms of receivers, um, if we get a smaller guy in round one, that's not to say we can't come back in the later rounds, even in, you know, five and five or later and pick up a 6'2, 6'3 kind of guy. 
Right. If, you know, provided that there's someone there. Um, we do have the size, at least a little more than we did last year right now, and I think the only aspect in our receiving core where we're, we'd be missing is somebody to take the top off the defense, like a Cooks. Yeah, I mean, I, I really like this idea of drafting Cooks in the first and going after offensive tackle in the second, uh, then picking up a corner, which everybody in uh, – for the Cat Chronicles fans, liked Pierre Desire. I know that's not how you say it, but they <laughs> desire Desire, uh, who I, I'm a little nervous about. Is a freaky athlete, pretty awesome, big body guy to be a corner, but really hasn't played against any real competition. Like, yeah. Um, I don't know what I think about that, but Michael Campanera in the fourth rounds, that might be a pretty awesome draft, but... I you know I still wonder Joe are you going to be slightly disappointed if we get a tackle in the first round or are you going to be like well that's what the need was um I I won't be disappointed if we take a tackle in the first round I'm actually you know it this is all such a guessing game um what if, we're doing of course that's what and, we're trying and, to and if the right the person is there at tackle at pick number 28, I say take him because if you get the right guy, you're going to have a 10-year starter potentially if he doesn't leave via free agency. But he could be someone that you plug in and start for 10 years. If you're if if at number 28 it's Brandon Cooks there, I think you'd be foolish not to take him um, just because of what he brings. Small, He's so small. I, I mean, uh, he is tiny. Uh, he is. He is, but He's I mean, gross, yes, Agent eighty nine for Carolina was not a big fellow by any means of the imagination. No, but he, but he had all heart. Yeah, yeah, and so we like. I think that Cooks could be that. I'm just worried that Cooks would like get blown up and like murdered by like. Well, I mean, he, like, I mean, he, like coming across the middle <laughs> by by Earl Thomas, and he's just <laughs> dead. <laughs> right, and and you know he's. Obviously, played football for a long time, and and I, as far as I've been able to see, avoided injury for the most part in college. Yeah, and but I mean, it's a different. Happened, what happened to the cat? Remember when Tom Brady took over at quarterback and uh, Drew Bledsoe and what's his name broke his chest? <laughs> I I keep broken oh, yeah, yeah. sternum. <laughs> like I mean, <laughs> that's uh, what could happen uh, with a guy like that. I. You know, maybe he'd just be fast enough to where that doesn't happen. Um, but here, Joe, this brings me to the question when we're talking offensive tackle, when we're talking wide receiver in this case, do you really buy this argument that you draft the best player available, BPA? And the reason I say do you buy it, what if the best player available was a defensive end? Right. I, I mean, do you really – I mean, would you pick – if Teddy Bridgewater was 28 and he's still available, he's the number one on the board, do you pick him up and then try to trade him? I mean, I, that wouldn't make any sense. So is it best possible, best player available in a position that's needed for your team? Is that what they mean? Or Right. I think so. I think it's a best best player available at a position of need. I think that's definitely what it is, whether it's tackle, receiver, or, I mean, possibly even cornerback. You know, in that first round, if Kyle Fuller's there, Cook's off the board, all the big tackles are off the board, why wouldn't we want to pick him up? You yeah, know? I think it's a cool kind of proposition. It's just like, you know, say, screw it. We're only going to put up 18 points anyway. It doesn't matter who we draft, so uh, just so let's hold them to 10. Right, right. <laughs> And really, I think if if all things being equal, if we could, we'd like to be a run-based team. Uh, you know, my friend Mike at Linum un underscore Mike on Twitter, he points out that, yes, we are a run-based team. You know, run first. We've got a stable of running backs. Um, and we've got big dollars in these running backs. So let's put them to use. Let's let them earn that money. Now, part of that, sure, is the offensive line, so you got to have the right people in place to block for them. 
we got the Sula Tuli dude coming back. Coming back, that's right. Um, and they've been happy with him. And then there's another guy, I forget his name. They all, first of all, sorry, offensive linemen, you're just not sexy. Right. The, I try my best to remember the names and stuff, but especially when you're injured. <laughs> it's right. really hard for me to remember if I never see your number called. But um, I think Sula, Sula Tule or whatever, you know, I'm sure I'm butchering it. I think it's Sula Tulo. Okay. I think I might uh, be too. Anyway. He played yeah, you know who talking about. showing a lot of promise, you know, at one point, and then he got the big injury. You know, maybe we're not as bad as we thought on offensive line, and I've heard some murmurs about this, is that was, you know what, it can't really get much worse. And when I say that is I know we had two pro bowlers, and I know when you look at that stupid pro football focus website, and not stupid. I think they do a wonderful job, and uh, you know where they tell you like how many posit plays a dude blew, and if he was value per position, and all this. And they gave the Panthers offensive line a, a impressive grade based on like how many sacks they give up, how many positive push yards, all these weird factors. But just the simple eye test last year, at least for games zero one through six was not good. No, and Tony, you have to remember something when you look at those stats. I think they're skewed a bit, and I say that because of the incredible athletic ability of Cam Newton and how many tackles he's able to break, how many guys he's able to make miss. Or carry. Right, or carry. If you've got if you've got a, a Tom Brady back there or a Peyton Manning, they're not going to be that elusive. Those numbers are skewed totally because of how good Cam is. Yeah. Taking it like you said at face value, you could tell the offensive line didn't pass the eye test. No, we couldn't run the ball. And look, my wife was screaming all season last year about give Cam a minute. And that was, I mean, obviously, I mean, not a full minute, but I mean, just give, I mean, what can you ask the guy to do? You know, you can't, your receivers don't get any separation. Yeah, we want Cam to get the ball out quicker. Yeah, we want him to go through his reads faster. But you know what? To me, he's done that. He's shown progress in those areas from a guy that had limited time in college playing, uh, who was stepped into a starting role on the team that was in shambles. I've seen him progress and get better. You know, I'm a Cam Newton fan all the way. So we could just look at that offensive line and just say, come on. I mean, you can't tell me. Jordan Gross, was he ever a Hall of Famer? No. Uh, was he at his best uh, last year? No. Um, was he a strong player in Panther? Yes. And where, you know, the fact that we are so worried that Travell Wharton is retiring, that Jordan Gross is retiring, that um, that tells us something, I think. I agree. But, I think that tells you the 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 just the, the nature of the offensive line, how the real nature of the offensive line. Um, when you're worried about losing Travell Wharton to retirement, what does that tell you? Yeah, Not, you know, no disrespect to Travell Wharton. I really but be prepared to be disrespected. <laughs> but, <laughs> But I, I'm not disrespecting him. I'm just calling it as I see it. Now I'm sure he's worked hard, and you know he he did everything the best that he could. But um, you know this is the NFL. Everybody's good. We talked about that earlier. Yeah. Um, with that, when you mentioned Tom Brady and them, if they were behind, imagine if Eli Manning was back there. Oh, God. If they snapped the ball, he would just fall down. Right. And we saw that when we saw us shut them out. And I felt like my man almost was just calling it an afternoon. Like, I mean, he snapped the ball, and he didn't even try. He just went straight to the ground and tuck in fetal position. Um, <laughs> Duck and cover. Duck and cover. <laughs> so, uh, and we saw Cam with that one play, and everybody watching the show, knows what play I'm talking about. And that's when he broke like seven tackles, ran around like a crazy person, and then got a first down. You, right. you know, he 
maybe you can say it's hard for offensive linemen to block for that type of stuff and all that garbage, but uh, they just got beat all the time or enough that we need a lot of help on offensive line. But here's the thing. I just, you know, I just worry that it is just adding that piece. Is it valuable enough at 28? I'm not going to be – ecstatic if we pick a tackle at 28 Joe just not gonna be that happy um, but you know I'm a real fan and when I say a real fan not to say nobody else isn't one I want the sexy pick I want the flashy pick you know I don't sure. want the, you know that's why I'm a fan and not a GM um, what do you think about this Ed Dixon guy it is could this bring us back to a two tight end set where we get two passing that we had all that success under with Chudzinski. That Cam, you know, Cam loves to fight in. I think that's a. I think it's a great move. Uh, Dixon, he didn't have the best of years last year. Uh, he's he, been hated by Panther by Raven fans. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a big body. He's got pretty good hands, and he is that other receiving threat at tight end that we've been lacking since Shockey left. Um, and that that plays to Cam's strong points, I think. We saw what he could do with two tight ends in the right offensive system that first year. Um, now, I don't know that that Shula has that creativity, but maybe that's why Ramsdale was brought in, to give him that, you know, that edge to get back more toward the uh, Chazinski-type offense. Yeah, um is that I don't think he can hurt um, no, God, no. The, the offense. I think that, um, you know, in that team, you know, he didn't have the best situation. And you can't say that Baltimore had the best offensive situation last year. Um, what's his name was nicked up? Rice. Ray Rice. Yeah. He, he said he wished he hadn't played through that injury or tried to come back. He wished he would just try to sit it out. Um you know, we, I'm just totally not sold on Flacco. I don't think he was worth that big of a paycheck. I hate to see when quarterbacks uh, are inflated that much to where it's like we just feel obligated to pay you that much money. I mean, he did win a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback. Sure. I just don't think he was worth $120 million or whatever. He got some right. ridiculous amount. And – he has his moments where he looks like he certainly isn't worth that money. Um, is he elite is what you're asking. Is he an elite quarterback? I don't think so. I think he's outside of the elite group of quarterbacks. Yeah, I wouldn't put him in the top ten or even close to it. Um, no, I would, I, I would, easy I would, ten. I would say middle of the pack kind of guy. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but not a liability, but certainly not the guy that's going to win the game for you, in my opinion. Right. He can't um, carry the offense. Yeah, so I don't think it wasn't like Dixon was playing on Peyton Manning's team on the Broncos right. and had that year. So I don't think, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for us, for us to give guys in the offense a shot. So, um, But if he doesn't take advantage of it, I could see him not being part of the offense very much um, early on or at l- later on as we move forward. So... You think that, and we got just two more minutes of the show, and we're going to wrap it up. With with this offseason, Joe, are we essentially just trying to reproduce last year's winning formula of defense, 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 and uh, maybe Cam can just be sensational by himself? Um, I think we are. I think we are trying to duplicate the formula we we were able to we had success with last year um, we are trying to do that and and it's because of the cap situation I'm sure Gettleman would love to go and bring in all kinds of free agents but we just don't have the dollars for that um, and and he has he, I think he's done a good job with what he's been a, what you know what funds he's had available for him I think he's done a pretty good job and we really won't know until the ball, you know, until the, the the ball is snapped for real. That's when we'll really be able to tell. But I think that he sees promise in the young receiving core that we have. I say receiving core, the young receivers that we have. Who are they again? Uh, uh, McNutt and King. Oh, oh those guys. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, uh, I think uh, uh, I'm with you is that I actually think, look, I mean, that dude is pretty beasty physically. I mean, he was a kick-ass in Iowa, I think. Um, and, look, King comes to Georgia, from, right? Yeah, the Bulldogs. And, you know, we got a soft spot here in the Dunn family for the Georgia Bulldogs. So, you know, I don't think uh, I'm kind of with uh, – you and everybody else's, I don't think things that, or a lot of people that the off, we're in such dire straits that we have to be super panicked. What I do worry about is this, is I don't see the running back core as a particular strength for us right now. I love D. Williams. Tolbert, I mean, he had to, he won me over last year when he killed that dude from San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, I hope you're all right, Mr. Reed, right, or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Uh, sorry, but, I mean, you know, I just don't – we have to have – those are the type of guys that just need an offensive line to block for them. They're not going to get out there and be like Chris Johnson and just take off to the stables all day long right. uh, or run for the races, whatever the hell the statement is. So I'm not particularly worried – um, but I don't have any real reason to think our offense is going to be more potent right now. Right, I, I, you, and you don't. You're right. We've got a bunch. I mean, let's be honest about this. Our entire receiving core is made up of cast-offs. Yeah. Okay, not one guy on there is somebody we drafted. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they're... they're uh, hey, Joe, we got... That's right. If nothing else, we've got Jason Avant. We've got Jason Avant. That's right. He's very good at catching. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I think it's about time to wrap up the show. Are you cool with that, Joe? Yeah, yeah. It was a it was a great show tonight. Again, thanks to Michael Campanero for coming on and giving us a few moments of his time. We we had the I guess we could say we had the inaugural Camp Fearless here tonight. Yeah, I mean this is the first Camp Fearless ever, uh, and I'm asking the Campanera family, hey, and Vinny, if you want to make a su uh, a summer boot camp for people trying to get in shape, this might be the name for you, Camp Fearless. I think it's got a lot of potential. This thanks a lot, Michael, for joining us tonight. Uh, backyard baller for sure. I wish him the best success in the NFL, and I know, Joey, you feel the same. And Cat Chronicles uh, fans, CarolinaCatChronicles.com, have spoken loudly over the past couple of weeks about Michael Campanero. Um, so big thanks to him, and we wish you the best. And uh, always, folks, come on back to CarolinaCatChronicles.com, and remember... Jason Avant. He's got great hands. All right. Panther Nation. Nice. Great Panther Nation. He is an eagle. He flies up in the air.